welcome Star Wars fans to this video. Now, I did say I was going to start do. Uh, let me start that again. Start doing some more <laughs> Star Wars uh, videos for you Star Wars fans out there. And this came up in my recent shows in live. This is something that I'm noticing a common thread with these flashbacks in the Book of Boba. There's something I think that we, we all need to pay attention to. Now, Tamoira did say that the finale would require a box of tissues. And I'm starting to think with the flashbacks that we've received thus far of young Boba um, on the, you know, Camino and the, the whole atmosphere, the landscape, Django taking off in the dead of night, Boba awaking to see his father disappear. Like, there's, there's a new layer that they're giving Boba here that was always hinted at in Attack of the Clones but never really explored. And one of my favorite shots from the whole of Attack of the Clones is when Boba picks up Django's helmet. And obviously, when Mango... Obviously, when Mace Windu beheads Django, you see the head uh, come out of the helmet by looking at the shadow. But when Boba runs up to the helmet, picks it up, holds it against his head, the score by John Williams kicks in and it's very ominous. And the whole scene, it just gives me chills because it doesn't just show why Boba does what he does or why he goes that path. But it also gives us an emotional tether, something that I think could have really been explored more, which has then been explored in The Clone Wars and has been more explored in uh, Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett now, where Boba really saw Jango as his father. Now, I know you'll say, yes, Jango was his father. Well, obviously, Jango is his father. But if we want to really break it down, Boba is a unaltered clone of Jango. So in, t in essence, he's more of a brother than anything, but because he's young... It's a father and son kind of connection. And the shot that sticks with me is when Boba gets out of the bed, Django's taking off from Kamino, and you see him run up to the window, looking as his father's leaving Kamino once again to obviously go and do bounty hunting work, you know, leaving him behind. So there's that absent father kind of thing there. And one thing I think this is going to set up, obviously it's a great image, a great shot of young Boba with his hand against the glass, seeing the ship in the distance taking off. One thing I think that we're going to see by the end of this series is you might see a flashback of Jango Fett. A de-aged Jango Fett talking to young Boba saying, Listen, I know I haven't been there, but once this job is done, then I will be there for you. Father and son. You know, we can be father and son. And it's like that thing where Vader was talking to Luke saying we can rule the galaxy as father and son. You know, that's a lot of what Star Wars is, is fathers and sons. And... Django disappearing like this on Boba every other night creates that void that is a staple in storytelling. It's something I've even talked about within my Cobra Kai videos. But I do feel like we are gearing up for a flashback of Django Fett making a promise to Boba by saying, hey, I'm going to stay here with you. I'm going to be your father. And once this job is done, then we can go and lead a life somewhere else. Father and son, start fresh. And what happens the very next day or the very next morning? Django is beheaded by Mace Windu. Then that makes that whole death have so much more emotional weight, but not just emotional weight, it redefines Django Fett's death. In what was meant to be just a cool death, Mace Windu getting the moment, you know, on screen, taking out Django Fett, who is a cold bounty hunter, really cold. You know, Mace Windu coming up there, beheading him, dealing with him in three seconds was cool, and it was a cool death. But now we'll, we'll, we'll look at it with a different perspective that is actually more heartbreaking. Not necessarily from Mace Windu's perspective, but from Boba's perspective. Boba's helpless and he's got to be sitting on the sidelines while his father goes on these missions and puts himself in all this danger. And what if the final time that Boba sat on the sidelines being help helpless, unable to do anything, is when he watches his father get killed? And the moment in Attack of the Clones after Mace beheads him and it cuts to Boba like looking on in shock and in horror that his dad is now dead how heartbreaking would that be for any kid how heartbreaking and then you can link this all the way into the clone wars where mace windu says himself boba watched as i kill his father you know he's well aware of what he did and obviously come on it, it, we're not going to question the morality of was he right to kill Django or was he not that arena was a blood sport everyone was killing everyone in that arena you had battle droids you had even 3po getting in on the action so that's not what I think is the is at stake here, but it's more of how did it affect Boba? Like really delving into that, really diving into what made his death 
have such an impact on Bova to the point where he not only wanted to take up bounty hunting like his father, but have a prejudice and a vengeful nature against Jedi. Which is why in the Mandalorian Season 2 finale, when Luke shows up, Boba's nowhere to be seen. Because I presume they're saving that for down the road, when maybe Boba and Luke interact, when maybe Boba meets another Jedi. They're saving that for down the road. There's a reason why they didn't do that. They want to save that, because I think it's going to be a key component of Boba's character. And it's one of the aspects of the show that I'm really enjoying. Episode 1 I thought was solid. Episode 2 I thought was great. Episode 3, eh, not so much, but I think, as I said, people have become so accustomed to binging a show all in one, they gloss over the episodes that are filler, they forget there's filler episodes in there. And what Episode 3 does, while it's filler, there's a lot of groundwork that is established. There is the Rancor, then is da Danny Trejo, I think that's his surname, Trejo, um, he's brought into the fold, you've got Black Crescent, like that, that, that Wookiee. You know, there's all these little nuggets that have now been placed throughout the show to be paid off in the next few episodes. And I think you will start to see it. I think this season will have a satisfying finale. And it's only the first season. There'll be more stories to tell with Boba. As it says, it's the Book of Boba Fett. And it being the Book of Boba, you know, we're only in like the first couple of chapters. You know, let's let the story really start to warm up. And as I said, I think all these shows, Kenobi, Book of Boba Fett, Bad Batch... Uh, Ahsoka, they're all connecting to the sequel trilogy before the sequel trilogy. That's the way I personally see it. So guys and girls, jump in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of Boba Fett thus far. Let me know what you think of the growth and the expansion. Do you think this idea of mine holds weight? How would you feel about this? And what are you most excited for for the next three episodes? And what, you know, are there any disappointments or any gripes that you have thus far? I'll see you down in the comment section below.